go and explore a little bit more with um, with regard to what we saw earlier, and that is if we have some sort of a region, maybe an oval, something like this, in which we have a gradient. Let's do a linear gradient and select um, a gradient that goes from black to white, or rather from white to black, but we can start with that and then simply modify it. There's a, um, where is it there, on the gradients sweep editor, you can switch switcheroo, there you go, so now it's going from white to black. So if I start at the bottom here, uh, it's going to be white and uh, the, the upper end will be black. And the reason I do that is that I want to clear the selection and then uh, perhaps select the outside here too. Let's go, actually it's just, <laughs> that was the selection, let's go back and invert it. There you go, invert the selection. There. And so what I want to do is make that all black. Um, that would be right click on the X, which marks the spot to uh, erase the selected to black. Then we click clear, and we do have the <clears throat> the oval here still with a gradient. And again, the whole point here is to show what happens if that gradient is actually used to do what we call a Z scale guide, a guide that will change the scale based on well, based on that guide. So if the guide says it's black, it's not gonna it's gonna scale it down to zero, very small. If it says if it sees it's white, it's gonna be maximum scale. The one thing that is changing the scale is the brush image. Right? So what we have, for instance, uh, let's go and switch the two. Before that, actually, let me just blur it a little bit. It's a very crisp transition here. I want to have a little bit of a blur, so I'm going to go to just a Gaussian blur. Uh, let's not be picky about it. Something like that. There. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to store this image and immediately actually put it into the swap image. So let's go to swap and click it and go back to the main image. Now on this one, I'm going to go put something else in there, but in the same area. So I can actually use this image also as a selection mask uh, if, it's, if it didn't start that way. Remember, I actually started that way with a selection mask, but you could possibly have started with something else. And now you look at this and say, how can I make this a selection mask? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, you could go and load it into the swap image. And since we already did that, we could go to image and then um, look under, where is it? There is an option there, alpha, copy the swap image to alpha. Right? So now we actually have the swap image in the alpha channel. That is the selection mask. That is also, if you want to call it a clip mask, but it's not one that's going to do all or nothing. It's not one that's going to say fully selected or fully non-selected and nothing in between. It is actually what's happening here. This line, these marching ants, is the, the divider at 50%. It's showing you where it's at 50% selected, right? And beyond here, it's going lower and lower all the way down to not selected. And on the inside, it's going higher all the way to fully selected. And then down here, we have another situation where we're reaching the dark side again and so the selection goes black uh, again and essentially uh, the marching ants at the middle zone again are showing where the 50 percent i like to call that the demarcation line uh, where the demarcation line is a separation from non-selected to fully selected all right so um what i can do is perhaps use that also to paint something in there but have it fade gradually because the selection mask now is fading i can store it to see that better if i store the selection uh, you will see that the selected image that that stored image is indeed a grayscale version it actually started as a grayscale here so no big surprise but it could have been anything else it's a grayscale 8-bit value at this point and what that does is allow you to uh, paint something um, something let's let's go do something like uh, you know let's go paint something with uh, particle brushes. Actually, let's go to the the media and find some of these particle brushes down here or foliage even more fascinating. Some trees and bushes and all sorts of weeds. Um, 
Let's collect seaweed. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay, so what you can see there is a little bit of uh, losing the, the color. It's, it's a bit more intense here, but then it gradually goes away uh, with that. I'm going to go perhaps more, and let's pin this down so it stays there for a little bit. And let's see something. Oh, grass. There's a weed painter there. That might be interesting because we can paint this a few times. And still not quite what I'm looking for. You know what? Instead of the particle mode, I'm going to go and actually draw into the um, into the, the plane image. So I'm run right now on the main image here. I'm going to clear the selection and clear everything to black. Let's go here and boom. And then I can draw and I can see this. So what I want to do is simply have that uh, one little piece here gets a little bit of darker uh, ambient occlusion, self shading, and so now I want to actually pick this up as a custom brush. The easiest way to do that is to actually also draw the alpha channel, the selection mask for it at the same time. So go to the foliage particle settings and, and pin it down here so you can fiddle with it. Go to foliage, that's what we were painting, and then now enable the alpha, the create alpha. That will create the alpha at the same time. You can go and just draw like this and then wait for the post-processing and bingo, you now have those marching ants. You can now pick that up as a custom brush. All right, so go to the brush and use the selected as the brush. And you can then clear this and disable the particles. And the, if you show the preview now for your brush, you see that your brush is now holding that image that we picked up with the alpha channel too, so it's not opaque on the background. Uh, you might change the opacity of the opaque parts there to see it a little bit better. There's a little bit of a black border around it, sort of this glow. We can fix that too. That's under the brush. Uh, Pre-multiply correction. Black is uh, the go color, so let's go clear that. So now we should be a little bit clearer. And there you go. We don't see the black borders. It still has some black pixels inside because of the self-shading, the ambient occlusion that we had initially. Those we want to keep, but at least to the edge or the anti-aliased edge of the uh, weeds, of the, the bushes and the, the helms of grass or whatever those thin parts are, uh, we're not seeing much blackness around it. Sometimes you see a, a white glow, sometimes you see a blue glow. It depends on what the background color is. Anyway, at this time we have a brush we can easily paint with, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to store that under the brush, store and manage. And so now, let's see what we have in the main. <laughs> we had nothing, but here in the swap image we have this. So if I keep it in the swap and I have nothing in the main image, as I'm painting, if I want that to actually change size, I just enable the Z scale. So now you see the brush changing size based on where I am. Surprise, surprise, it is the biggest near here where the, um, where the image in the swap is the brightest, just around here. Now, if you want to actually see that background image, the guide, uh, you can do so. You can enable um, up here, click on this for uh, blending the two, but it's black and the default blending mode is multiply, so it will be difficult. If you do a screen mode, you'll see it better. So now as you... No, you're not painting on this image. You're seeing through it. It's being blended together. The image that we're actually painting on is this one, completely black. Uh, and But the size that you see, the brightness of the image behind it is affecting the, uh, the brush size. And so as I'm painting around here, it's completely changing the size. And when I'm done here, I undo this and you got this. Now, we need a little bit of randomness. We need uh, perhaps add a little bit of, uh, yeah, let's do that, some randomness. If I say it, might as well do it. Uh, <laughs> let's go here, <clears throat> enable uh, random position. Okay. Uh, speed scale, that might also be interesting. Smaller, if I go slowly, and then faster, if, a bigger, if I go fast. All right, so you go slowly, it's very small, even here. And then if you move faster, it goes faster. So that's a speed scale. And you could go the other way so that it's uh, if you go slowly, it's big. And then as you go faster, it may go smaller. Those are great for a wet pen. Uh, 
you know, pencils with uh, ink coming out as you move fast. A little bit uh, smaller as you're going fast, and then when you slow down, the ink has more time to get in. Uh, seems like somebody's calling me or texting me here, so let me uh, reduce the volume on this a little bit. There you go. I think somebody's sending me a whole bunch of pictures on WhatsApp. Um, let's see. All right, so we need some random position. We don't need perhaps the random the speed scale. Uh, we might want random size so that they're not all looking the same. Um, we also here let's uh, let's get rid of the uh, the see through mode so we can see if I zoom in here what's happening. So you see that they are kind of randomly jumping around. Uh, you could also uh, add a little bit of uh, different step distance, a bit bigger, so you have to travel more with the brush before it stamps another one down. Ch set the random size even more dramatic, so some of them are really small. And then even the hue, saturation, brightness, all of these, saturation, right? So you actually get different hues, different colors, some yellowish, some green, blue, much, much more realistic looking that way, right? So that's uh, how you can do this. And so essentially you have somewhere up here, some small patch and then some bigger patch. Now you may want to have a good way to see all that. If you paint them too close together, they're gonna be just difficult to see. So you want to perhaps uh, increase that step distance even more, something like so. And so now you can see how as, you, as you're drawing along here, it's uh, coming small here at, along the edge but as soon as you drop in it's going to be big and then as you go farther back it's small again All right now <clears throat> these are not very bright we might want to make the brightness a little bit higher so that's in the brush itself the stored copy here i can go and let's see hue saturation value let's bring the value up All right so now we have them brighter and that's something you might want to do uh, for the parts that are up close All right so initially keep the brush a little bit darker Right, a little bit on the dark side. That's really far away. You won't see it much. Right, maybe even a slightly different tint. Right, maybe a bit more bluish or something like that. So it looks like it's fading in the fog. The temperature farther away, colder, and then change the hue to something a bit more reddish. And certainly, in order to see that better, you'll also want to increase the brightness. So now you have that. So you combine all this with. Uh, the randomness of it, uh, in, in no time you'll be able to create something fairly impressive. The image itself was very quickly done. If you spend a little bit more time on it, you might uh, do even better than that. Because, uh, for instance, what you could do is go back to the foliage brush here and enable it so that it's doing these. But uh, this time without the size, so you have full control of that without the guide. Let's go erase and selection uh, as you're testing you may not need the alpha yet so let's go uncheck create alpha so you can paint around and see if it's doing any ambient occlusion see if they're growing big enough see if perhaps you want a totally different grass or different weeds and bushes uh, and then at some point uh, you might want to even make them a little bit bigger. So here's a scale and even the pen size. So you have more of a branch structure there. Uh, it looks a little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier. And those those will be great if you then, let's say if you draw them like this, maybe even rotate it so you have more of a vertical space or just add space around it. If you go to the image menu, change the image size. You see right now it's uh, 1024 by 768. Well, what we'll do is we'll simply add, we'll keep it in the middle and we'll add something around it, make that about 1400 and we could square it or we could, uh, you know, actually 1400, that would be more on the vertical side. So let's keep it at about 1200 horizontal and 1400 vertical. And so now we added quite a bit of space around it. It gets to be the same color as what's currently the background color, which is perfect. And so we can paint this. Uh, perhaps we need to paint a few of them. Uh, perhaps we need to make them even longer so we can have the scale. We can have the ambient amount reduced a little bit, the shading a little bit. 
all sorts of different things you can play with here the rule count uh, maximum number of particles maybe too dense right so we need to reduce it a little bit so it's less dense um, maximum particles really little there you go that that will go much faster but you'll see less of the fine detail at the tip of these uh, branches so let's go back to something a little bit more like this yeah, that could probably go. So uh, let me try this. I'm going to go just like stay around the line, but perhaps. Uh, yeah, that's one of those things where you wonder, should you do a lot of them or just a little bit? If you do a little bit, you'll have finer control later. If you do a lot of it, it'll be difficult to do fine details. All right, so perhaps uh, something like just one little dab. Something like this, right? And uh, again, uh, you can create alpha, undo this, and then if you liked that movement you did with the mouse, just do a shift A to render it again. Right? Now, uh, if you zoomed in, it may come up at a different location because it's got its own coordinate system that it doesn't follow. Uh, so shift A might appear over here now and in fact not render it because it already got an alpha channel a selection mask from the prior one so just be aware that you may need to clear the selection mask if you want to actually add another one here right and then clear that selection mask if you want to add yet another one here in between you might want to even change brightness color hue everything and so on so create a very complex combination of multiple uh, multiples of these dudes uh, let's go 100% in the middle, zoom in a little bit, or not, let's make it 100%, and you know what, let's do that, let's try 100%, I think it's faster too when you do 100% because it doesn't have to scale it for you, okay, and yeah, that's good, that's good, so let's go uh, brush, use this as selection, and as a brush, and then uh, store it, and there we are, so we have our new Let's go nuke this guy here, and we have our new uh, image. We can turn off the particle system, because that's still enabled. Uh, and then we can uh, remember we need to also uh, do the pre-multiply correction. Black is still the background, so that's better. There you go. There you go. OK, so <laughs> so now let's go see our our controller in the back there. Let's enable that again. God, I've done this so many times now. You guys should know exactly what I'm doing. There you go. Look at that. Okay. And we need the step distance a little bit higher. Much higher. Let's try much higher. So we actually get to paint over it and enjoy this for a while for a change. There. Something like this. Look at that. Sparse is the new good. Sparse is the new perfection. Okay, so uh, the trick is to draw from the back to the front, right? Like the real thing, right? So you draw from the back, go to the left, go to the right. This is this, that is that, and there we go. It's just automatically scaling, scaling it for you, but also keeping a few things a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger in a random way. Uh, if you want to add a little bit more depth to it, one thing you can also do is... Um, uh, add some more fog or, or rather some uh, some embossing on those images. So one thing I would do is actually pass that through the filters. The brush itself has very few filters except for the uh, animated brush. So if you go to the brush menu and look for animated brush, you can see the animated brush timeline, right? which is a bunch of filters on the image or multiple images. It has to be animated. Now, since we only have one image here in the uh, film strip, if you look at it, there's only one. But what you do is you simply select it, make sure it's reset, no change in scale or anything. And after you've selected it, just add itself to it. So you add the same image that's your current main brush image. Uh, you put it, add it to this um, to this animated brush, right? To, to, to its timeline. You have two images now. I think you need about three or four Let's just not be picky about it. Let's just uh, add another one and another one. I'm pretty sure that will do. But you know what? It's better if we have a few more because then as we apply filters, maybe we're not sure exactly what value we want, what color, what level of embossing. And what we could do is actually have a whole range of those 
and then simply pick the one we really like or maybe pick a couple right? if we apply a color uh, maybe a reddish tint and over here and so on so orange yellow brown white dark whatever it is you can keep adding a few frames and before you know it you either crash or you don't <laughs> no uh, you what you have here is you're not going to run out of memory too easily you could just keep an eye on that if you have too much stuff going on but um, what you now have is a custom animated brush and with the custom animator brush, a whole universe opens here under this menu called animator brush, where you can do a bunch of things. You can save it. I would highly recommend doing that. The A and B brush file, that's the animator brush. So, you know, save it so you can use it again. Um, I'm not going to save it here, actually, because I don't need to use it again. But just wanted to show you, you can, and you should do that. Uh, one thing you can also do is load an image sequence into the brush that way or save it back out as a sequence. Maybe you want to do something else with it. But you could also load an AVI file as animated brush. And an array, which is a, you know, X by Z or uh, X by Y, uh, uh, a horizontal by vertical layout of cells, you can, uh, an array of cells can be turned into a sequence of images for an animated brush too. Uh, you can crop an animated brush. You can put that into the animated brush timeline. That's really where I wanted to go with that, right? So here's the animated brush timeline. And just like the regular animation timeline, you have a bunch of filters. And you could, for instance, make them go brighter and darker again. Right? So you could start at the beginning and say, let's do a color add with a little bit more red. Oh, that's a lot of red. There, a little bit more, a little bit more red. Keyframe that. And then the brush image needs to turn kind of bluish around here. So we'll add more uh, blue and reduce the red and maybe add a little bit of green there so it's kind of a cyan probably too bright but we can adjust that later too so now we have two keyframes one here and one here and we can go to another place here perhaps to increase the green reduce the blue and the red uh, perhaps increase the red a little bit so it's kind of a yellowish add that and at the end we want the same value as before which we remember was simply zero change uh, although we might want to add a little bit of both just to make it all of these just to make it a little bit brighter and there you go and keyframe that so now we have a couple of keyframes along the timeline showing our brush images the animator brush image and we render that and it's going across and now you see the changes in the brush image right and if you want to just use that you use that you use it you use the destination the top here is the source and the bottom is the destination sequence we have two image sequences in this brush or in this filter and what we can do is uh, use the destination as the new brush or we could say you know what let's keep it let's keep it and do some more we can do some more works like for instance i'm I was mentioning the embossing right so we have the convolved gray emboss color emboss we can keep the embossing and uh, you see in the preview here a lot of embossing will give you a little bit of a 3D look to that. So let's give it some amount, not too much. And that's where I'm thinking also we might want to keyframe it so that we can figure out, okay, let's go from here, keyframe that, and here still use the same value, but then over here we'll give it a lot more embossing, and then here we'll keep it at the same value. Right, so we have a change in the value in the amount of embossing across this. And let's go render that. So it's now changing through the colors that it has already captured in the prior filter, but now it's furthermore changing through the embossing level. And we could do another level if the embossing needs to be even more. Right? You can emboss on top of it. Who's the boss now? Huh? <laughs> uh, we could do edge detection. We could do maximize, minimize, all sorts of other filters here. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff here that you can explore on the image sequence of the brush. And then once you're done, you'd simply say, let's go keep that. Destination is now the brush. And store that as a new brush. And there it is. So now we have a new show the film strip of that one. We now have a new image sequence. We started with this one. Right there. And we have a new image sequence where the images are changing in color or hue and also the level of embossing. It's a bit difficult to see the embossing here, but we'll see that when we actually paint with it. So let's pick it, 
let's go close this filter let's go paint and as you're painting of course we still have the size change let's go disable that right now we just want to see what the brush does by itself not when it's under the influence and so you can see here some of the images are not embossed at all and here we have one that's very heavily embossed can you tell there's some nice shaded look to it like it's being lit on left from the left side and has a bit of a darker side on the right edge that's the embossing right so lots of things you can do that way simply applying filters across the animator brush sequence all right so i think that's good enough for today hopefully that didn't confuse too much and give you some ideas of stuff to try next we will certainly take this technique again uh combining the z scale guide with actual material we want to paint over right so we have a rendered image a landscape uh, maybe a beautiful Martian landscape, and it's mostly red, mostly dead, but there are a couple of green patches we will want to paint into it. And then we simply need to paint over that. And as we paint, the brush will appear. To right, so give you an idea, if we, for instance, have something like this, but even more elongated, uh, let's say, for instance, we apply a blur filter uh, in a motion sense, let's say like this, and bit more of it that's actually not a very strong motion let's do something a bit more intense what other blur can we do here mystic vision here yeah, that will do radial blur that too if we move it down below or something like that okay all I want to do is have some fun <laughs> all right factor oh yeah, look at that and the quality why not okay so we could now also go to the transform filter here move it down a little bit make it tileable um, there you go and then also um, I'll blur it again I don't like the sudden fall off here so I'm going to blur it some more with the Gaussian blur again there you go and perhaps also increase the contrast dynamic range there you go all right so now we have basically a zone in which we uh, perhaps even want to add more of a progression so the, the the linear gradient here we could say multiply it one against the other right so we go in mode uh, multiply mode so that uh, here we gradually disappear maybe something from here on there and then here we could go the other way all sorts of little tricks to uh to play with this but well right now if i if i simply have this as my background image in the swap image there you go and i may have something completely different in the foreground maybe uh i don't know a grid pattern let's go render something like uh grid distance like so and then also make it a little bit of a perspective look at that so transform 3d perspective no not this way let's make it zero here and then there this way something like that All right so but keep in mind we have this here and we have this here and so what we can do with the Z scale enabled, as you go to the brush and the preview is enabled, we see the grass disappear smaller and get bigger here. And now it certainly looks like it's correlated to that grid in the pattern. It looks like a perspective match, right? So that's the, the magic with it. So let's go uh, give it some random, oh, that's the size. That's the step distance, make it pretty big. Uh, angle tiny little wobble, a wiggle wiggle right just a tiny little bit random size lots of it a random position definitely lots of it too so here you know that's too much hue change too much on the random hue and by the way if you need to clear but you don't want to clear the grid just put that grid in a different layer right so let's uh let's see here i have the grid here i'm going to go add another layer and this one so the grid is at the bottom could be at the top doesn't matter instead of multiply mode i'm going to say uh, additive yep 
That way, this will be added on top. And tiny little ones in the front here. All right. So now, of course, this, this material is appearing kind of see-through with the grid because it's in additive mode. It's not in an opaque mode. Um, what I'm going to do instead now is go hide this, uh, not keep it in additive mode. I'm going to go and pick it up. This is the layer we are working on. We could pick this up as a, as a custom brush. Custom brush, use the whole selection. Uh, the custom brush does contain now just those painted stuff that you see here. Uh, we don't need to change the size, but we need to make the black parts, the background, transparent. Right? So we we'll simply go with the custom brush selector tool, right click on that, and then you can key it to background black. And you can adjust the softness of that a little bit. And, but now you have a brush. Oops, that was not it. There you go. Now you have a brush that is going to be appearing opaque in the middle and transparent on the outside. The background is transparent. All right, so with that in mind, you can then simply clear the image you have in that layer. You still have the image underneath with the grid, but that's a separate layer. You can hide that if you don't want to see it. Uh, but you can have the ones above in additive mode, um, or you can say, okay, I want it here. All right. And if that's where you want it, you can, but you got a few maybe, you can undo and redo, shift A. Or you could use the new, that's in the 2019 edition. This is the new uh, stamp tool right there. So with the stamp tool, it takes the image that you have in your, uh, in your brush, and you don't need to see the brush here anymore. You can hide it. And then you can say where you actually want to see it. You can put one here and simply click outside and there it goes. And then brush again if you want to see another one. Uh, stamp tool. And maybe this one goes all the way back there, but much smaller. And even squeeze it flat. Okay. And click outside. And then you have one more. And for this one, what we'll do is we'll zoom in. So we have a pretty clear view. Maybe it's too early. Let's see if we, yeah, we may want to first see the stamp. Yeah, it's too big. So let's make, bring it down a little bit. There you go. I'm using my, the, the rotational wheel, the little thumb wheel on my mouse for that. But so now we can place it exactly where we want as we zoom in. And that's your stamp tool for you. Okay. And click outside. Bingo. Uh, now, the, the grid is still underneath it, still invisible. We could put yet another layer below that. Let's do that. Let's get this layer down. So we have a black color underneath it. And then this one, instead of multiply mode, which is the default mode, we'll put it in the screen mode, but we'll, we'll reduce its intensity so it's only very barely visible. All right. And of course, the question is, well, how do I stamp this entire image, this layer that's above on top of the one here without seeing through? And, and that can be done in a couple of ways. Right? So one thing I would do perhaps is just try, pick this up again as a custom brush, use the whole thing, this entire layout of multiple grasshoppers there, and then we can hide it and we can select the one below and simply use the uh, brush stamp tool again. So now we chose them both, but it's showing it at different opacity levels. Um, you see this one here is not so bright, so we'll, we'll go, go a little bit brighter. There you go. The grid is actually gone because we didn't keep it transparent on the, on the brush, so we would need to do that first or we change the mode to something a little bit different where it's not actually erasing it. But that might affect the colors. Right? So keep that in mind. If you're doing anything like changing the color from screen mode to, I don't know, additive or some others, you might still see the grid. Most of the time you will not see it in this case because it is black uh, on the background of my brush. 
So the the proper way to do this, I think, is to first make sure that the background on the brush, right click again here, the background on the brush needs to be transparent. And if you want to do absolutely best, you do brush, uh, pre-multiply correction, get rid of the black borders, the fuzzy stuff. Now you should be able to, um, let's see, undo this, okay, and show the stamp tool. What is that, a multiply or a screen mode? It doesn't matter in a way. You want to just stamp it over now, right? So you, you can, in fact, delete the layer down below here. And then just keep, or move it up first. I think you need to keep the lowest level layer anyway. This one can go. Um, this one can go. And you just have one layer now, the bottom. And you simply show the brush stamp tool. And there you go. And so now you have the brush showing on top in the multiply mode. And so that's that's the not in the multiply mode, sorry, in the replace mode. Right. Properly positioned, and you can even still refine it and move it around if you if you absolutely must. I wouldn't do it at this time, but I'm not you, so you get to do what you want to do, and um, I get to do what I want to do, and what I want to do at this time is call it done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>